Okay, let's look at a lesson overview for 34.1, which is the endocrine system. And you can think about it like this. Um, if you had a couple of friends, you can make a phone call that would carry your message directly to those one or two friends. Or if you wanted to get a message out to thousands of people, you could think of something along the lines of like broadcasting your message on the radio so that everybody tuned in could hear it. So cells send messages too, and they can make a direct call or they can send out a whole broadcast. So what are the components of the endocrine system? Well, they're made up of glands that release hormones into the blood, and these hormones deliver messages throughout the body. So it's like a radio, it's broadcasting chemical messages. And these chemicals are what we call hormones. These are released in one part of the body. They travel through the blood and they affect cells in other parts of the body. And hormones can affect almost every cell in the body. They act by binding to specific chemical receptors on cell membranes or within cells. And cells that have receptors for a particular hormone are what we call target cells. Target cells. If a cell does not have receptors for a particular hormone, it has no effect on it. So the body's responses to hormones are slower and longer lasting than its responses to say those quick nerve impulses. It takes several minutes, several hours, or even several days for a hormone to have a full effect on its target cells. <coughs> the hormone insulin promotes the liver to convert blood glucose to glycogen and store it. Glucagon prompts the liver to convert glycogen to glucose and release it into the blood. The opposing effects maintain homeostasis by keeping blood glucose levels in a very narrow range. So let's talk about what a gland is. A gland is an organ that produces and releases a substance or a secretion. The exocrine glands release their secretions through tube-like structures, which are called ducts, out of the body or directly into the digestive system. So the exocrine glands include those that release sweat, tears, and digestive enzymes. The endocrine glands usually release their secretions, which are hormones, directly into the blood, which transports the secretions throughout the body. Other body structures, such as bones, fat tissue, the heart, and the small intestine also produce and release hormones. So nearly all cells have been shown to produce small amounts of hormone-like substances that we call prostaglandins. And these are modified fatty acids that are produced by a wide range of cells. Uh, they generally affect only nearby cells and tissues and um, therefore are sometimes just known as local hormones because they don't travel as far. So how do hormones affect cells? Well, once inside the cell, steroid hormones can enter the nucleus and change the pattern of gene expression in a target cell. So hormones fall into two different groups, steroids and non-steroid hormones. And each type acts on target cells in a different way. The steroids are produced from a lipid called cholesterol. Non-steroids include your proteins, your small peptides, and your modified amino acids. And because steroid hormones are lipids, they can easily cross cell membranes. Um, they act by entering the nucleus of the cell and changing the pattern of gene expression, making the effects of many steroid hormones especially powerful and long-lasting. So a steroid hormone enters a cell by passing directly across the cell membrane. Once inside, it binds to a steroid receptor protein and forms a hormone receptor complex. The hormone receptor complex enters the nucleus of the cell. So in the nucleus, it binds to regions of the DNA to control gene expression. This binding initiates the transcription of specific, specific genes to the messenger RNA. And the messenger RNA moves into the cytoplasm and uh, directs protein synthesis. Now let's talk about the non-steroid hormones. They generally cannot pass through the cell membrane of the target cells and they bind to receptors in a target cell and cause the release of secondary messengers that affect cell activities. So a non-steroid hormone 
uh, binds to receptors on the cell membrane because it's not crossing the membrane, it's on the membrane. The binding of the hormone activates enzymes on the inner surface of the cell uh, membrane. These enzymes release secondary messages, messengers to relay the hormone's message within the cell. So one common secondary messenger is cyclic AMP, which is produced from ATP. Other secondary messengers include calcium ions, nucleotides, and fatty acids. So the secondary messengers can activate or inhibit a wide range of cell activities. So steroid and non-steroid steroid hormones can have powerful effects on their targeted cells. Um, it makes it especially important to understand the ways in which the endocrine system regulates their production and releases it into the blood. Okay, we'll do the next section.